Let's do an example with ideal gas. So I put this one, when someone insults you by saying, hey, you have an IQ of room temperature, <laughs> laughs at Calvin. <laughs> of course, then it's a larger value. All right, so let's consider then what to do on this question right here. We have eight grams of helium gas, and we're told the mass number is four, and we have a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and at a pressure of 100,000 pascals. And the question is, first of all, what's the volume of the gas? And after that, how many atoms of helium are there? Well, how do we figure out the volume? Well, we can use this equation, right? The PV equals nRT. Well, that means then that the volume must be, uh, I'm just going to solve for V here. So I'm going to say V equals, I'm just going to get V by itself. That means it's got to be N times R times T, all that divided by P. Okay, that's simple enough. So now we just got to find out what we know. Do we know P? We do, and it's in Pascals. We're good. T, the temperature, uh-oh, we're going to need to know that one. So let's maybe do the temperature off to the side, maybe. So we'll just say, all right, temperature. Well, T, remember, we need it in Kelvin. So what is that going to be? Well, it's going to be the temperature in Celsius. This is an equation from your data booklet, uh, plus 273. So that means in this case right here, then, I can say that the temperature will be, let's see, it'll be 20 plus 273, which means it's going to be 293 Kelvin. Okay, that's good. Now we have our temperature. Yay. And we need also to know N, though, and that's going to be the tougher one. So how do we actually do N? I want you to remember that an element uh, with mass number A has a molar mass of A grams. Also, remember that N is equal to the actual mass over the molar mass. Well, why is that helpful? Well, we know that A, for example, is going to be 4. That's because they told us that right here. right? That's because we've actually got this gas, helium gas. We've actually got helium, and we write it as a 4. Technically, it's a 2 here. It's a second element, but it's helium 4 like this. All right, so if we know that the element has a mass number of A, which is 4, that means we know its molar mass then is 4. Well, that means I can find N. I can say that, oh, that means N, the number of moles, is going to be the actual mass that we have, which is 8 grams. I'll just write it down here. 8 grams, all that divided by the molar mass, which I know is 4. That means there's 4 grams for every mole. If that's the case, the grams will cancel out. I end up with 8 over 4, which is just 2. So I have 2 moles. That's actually really important because now I have what I need. I have my 2 moles here. I've got my temperature. That means I can put everything together. That means I've got V then equals, let's see, it's N, which is 2 times R, which is 8.31, that's the constant, uh, times T, which is 293 Kelvin, that is. All that divided by the pressure, which is 100,000. Well, this I can just do on my calculator. Okay, so I'm just going to do a fraction, for example, and I'll say 2 times 8.31, uh, that's a gas constant, uh, times 293 Kelvin, divide that by 100,000. Oops, that's too many zeros, isn't it? Yeah. And there we go. So I have a number of 0 0.04869.66. Now what should I do here? Well, how many significant figures should I use? I get two to use, so I'll do that. So I'll say that means the volume then is going to be approximately equal to, uh, let's see, I can say 4.9. I'll do it this. I'll do it in the scientific notation. 4.9 times 10 to the minus, minus 2. And the units, of course, would be meters cubed. So that's my final answer for this one. Sounded kind of complicated, and it kind of was, because we had to remember this trick right here, right, with the mass number and how that tells you the molar mass, and that's used to get you the moles. I think that was really important. Now, how do we actually uh, get the atoms of helium? We can use this equation from your uh, data booklet, which is N equals capital N over NA. Because we want the number of atoms, that means we want N, like capital N here. So we want capital N, which is just going to be the number of moles times Avogadro's number. Well, what's that going to be? Let's see. It's going to be uh, number of moles, which we said was 2. All that times Avogadro's number, which is just 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's how many atoms in one mole times two moles. That just means I answer, then it's just going to be in atoms. So let me use my calculator for that, and I'll say, hey, what's 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23? I end up with an answer of 1.204 times 10 to the 24. Now, if I want to do this answer to the proper significant figures, again, I can only use 2, so I'll say that means then the total number of atoms will be 1.2 
times 10 to the 24, and let's make sure we use the right units, which is atoms. Okay, so that's it for that one. We've actually solved it, and there we go. We can see how we can actually deal with something that's fairly challenging, but there we go, we were able to do it.